glad that uh, you could join us today. Sorry for that a bit of a delay there, but uh, we're going to start right now, and uh, we're going to take a look at the Forex market. This time we're going to take a look at trend lines, in fact, and the breakouts of trend lines. And uh, I have some, at least one good example in mind, but uh, we'll take a look at that later on and see which example that is. First of all, we have to go through this risk disclaimer explaining that trading for exchange is considered high risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. And this webinar is for educational purposes only. So thanks for your attention on that. Once again, this is Admiral Markets, and my name is Chris. We're going to take a look at trend line breaks through today's focus of establishing the trend, looking for opportunities, filters, triggers, and entry methodologies. All right, and uh, we'll do that in just a few minutes, in fact. Before we do that, we're going to take a look at the force calendar, and also I'm going to welcome Michal. Good morning. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, everybody. It's very nice to see all of you attend this webinar this morning. My name, once again, is uh, Michal Onohov, and I'm a client relationship manager for Admiral Markets. Give me one second to come up with a perfect screen. There we go. Here's my picture, and here are all my contact details here as well. You can always reach me on my email. Skype, or you can add me on LinkedIn. I'll cherish every new connection, of course. Today, uh, since we're going to have another live trading session, we are going to have one fun with Forex episode before that. And I called this one for a few dollars more because all of us here, for one reason, one reason only, make a few dollars more on Forex trading. So, a lot of people who decide to become traders, they hit the ground running and they never stop making profits constantly. And I'll get a little bit curious, just how much you can make if you keep doubling your investment every day. So, if you made a minimum deposit of, say, $10, I think it's fair to say you can make $1 profit today. So, what would happen if you carried on making $1 profit every day? Now, you would be surprised just how little time it would take for you to make a huge profit and a huge difference for your financial situation. Now, if you had one dollar profit today, you kept doubling it every day for 48 days in a row, in 48 days, you would have this spectacular number. Now, it took me a few minutes to come up with a perfect, perfect explanation of how that number should sound, and it's exactly 100 Forty trillion seven hundred thirty seven billion four hundred eighty eight million three hundred fifty five thousand three hundred twenty eight dollars and zero cents. This is how much you would get if you made a profit of one dollar today and kept doubling it for forty days forty eight days in a row. Just think about it. It's all in your hands, traders. If you want to ask me about other uh, making profit opportunities, you can always do so on my email or if you want to know and learn how to make those kind of profits. We teach that in Trading Camp. This is a new educational program by Admiral Markets. The new program is going to start in two weeks on the 18th of November. You will receive a three-week uh, educational course and one-week practical trading course with everyday assignments, strategies by professional traders, performance tracking, personal coaching, also literature is going to be supplied. In order to get into the trading camp, all you have to do is write a short S in your Forex aims, around 100, 200 words, open a real account with a minimum deposit. It can be as little as 10 or $200. All depends on the region, all depends on the country. So if you want to have any, ask any questions about trading camp, send me an email at camp.marmarkets.com or if you want to recommend an interesting observation, a fact or a story about Forex or investment, mo.marmarkets.com. Thank you very much, guys. I will now pass the floor back to Chris. Thank you so much, Michal. Always great to hear from Michal. And uh, we're going to take a look at the Forex market now and see what we have to trade today. Alrighty, so you should be seeing my uh, pound dollar one hour chart. In fact, hopefully that's all good to go. And we're going to take a look at the First of all, at the Admiral Markets um, economic calendar. All right. So you do that by going to 
analytics, and you can take a look at Forex Calendar or even Wave Analysis. Small promotion for my uh, my edit wave count. <laughs> and uh, what do we have today? Well, we have Pound News in six minutes, Medium Impact, and uh, Medium Impact one and a half hours from now. Some smaller European news, as always. Kind of some medium light impact news. Quite a extensive list, but nothing major. Tomorrow, of course, it's a bit different because then we have the euro and pound interest rate. And Friday, we have NFP, by the way. Uh, just in case you want to register for any other webinars this week or next week, just go to education and then click on uh, any of these blue buttons and sign up for any of these uh, sessions. All right. Tomorrow, we'll be taking a look at Trading Confluence uh, together with Tarantala. All righty. Let's go back to our charts. Pound dollar uh, had a very, very big boost yesterday, as expected. Um, we were looking already at this this impulse here to the upside, and considering the fact that that could happen, of course, the news event definitely ad adding fuel to this uh, to this upside. And uh, we recently had even a bounce during uh, Asian session, which is quite uncommon to see the pound dollar move up uh, about six, four, yeah, fifty pips. That time of day is, is quite seldom, but it happens once in a while. So at the moment, uh, this this is looking pretty pretty bullish. In fact, don't forget that if we look at the four-hour chart, this is just a range with a, with a clear bounce off the bottom now. So we could maybe test the tops again. Potentially, I wouldn't say that now is the best spot. We could easily retrace back to, for example, uh, this support here on 160.23. That's easily possible. And we could see maybe a bounce there for more upside. Something like this maybe. And then maybe see a bounce here for for a few more legs up, maybe to test something in here. Let's take a look at the four hour chart. Don't forget that we've had a break of this downside here like that, if you put a trend line like that yesterday in fact. Other than that, I don't see really any trend lines that uh, could be of importance for our trading. I don't see any break uh, because this is just, here we had a break yesterday. That was during the night, in fact, right? Or my night, at least, during the Asian session. Other than that, I don't see really any trend line breaks that would be valid for our session today. Um, so let's take a look at the euro. This maybe has something. We could take a look at this line connecting these bottoms. There could be a small fall if we push through that. Uh, there's a potential of it making one more fall because this is a very strong oscillator reading. So, you know, there is always a likelihood of this bottom being broken, uh, and that still remains. That potential is still there. Once we, of course, break this bottom, we'll have divergence, and we could expect uh, a bigger correction, uh, maybe of this entire downside. Right. So that potential is still there. Now, how much can we break it? Difficult to say, but uh, we could put a fib on this last down move. Taking a conservative estimate of aiming for the minus 272 at around 134.10. This trend line is around 134.67, so maybe 50 pips. Once we break the, the trend line, it could be a, a reasonable target to aim for. Other than that, let's take a look if we do keep on moving up because we can see there is some punch here, right, at the moment. There was a, an impulse looking at price action. Let me zoom in so you can see that a bit better maybe. Right, so how about if we don't break this trend line? I think this is a good trend line. Our focus today is on trend line breaks, but if we don't, then uh, we could, I would also wouldn't mind to sell it around here, right, 133. 135.50 maybe, right in here at the, the, the minus 618 target. You can see we stopped at the minus 272. And got this downside. So if we the next target could be that minus 618. All right. So I think a 20 pip stop loss should be enough. But uh, yeah, 20, 25 should be enough. Anything that any push in here to that zone I think is a selling zone as well. We could take a look at the Camarilla later on, maybe. Um, first, I want to hunt for trend lines, if you don't mind. And then uh, if we do get the catch here, we can add upon the break here and have the scale in all for that uh, 50 pip target. 
when you put a fib on this first upside. There's also a minus 618 target. You see we're bouncing off the 50 as we speak here. So that would be a, a minus 618 target of this fib as well. So there's confluence there. Not sure if anyone is, is very new in here, otherwise we can take a look at maybe a lot, uh, larger time frames. But I mean, to be honest, it's all uh, about this downside. Very massive. And once we get a follow through, I would expect correction and at least one more follow through maybe to test this bottom. That's how it's looking at. Looking at the power of this downside, that's what I would expect. Something like this in the intermediate future. Right, so those of you who like larger time frames, that's what I would expect personally. Let's see. But looking at the 15-minute world, uh, you know, it, it looks like we're in a bouncing spot as we speak. In fact, potentially here to go up to that 133, 135.50. But personally, I wouldn't trade it. I would rather wait. You know, I'm pretty focused. I'm always pretty disciplined in that. If I see a one-hour downtrend, I, I don't, you know, I don't want to go long. That's just me and my rules. Yes, there is maybe, if you look at this one hour, the, our band is already pointed up a bit. Right, so the this 34 EMA band is has a slight edge, you know, angle to it, that has everything to do with this impulse already up. So, you know, and we can use the band now for support. So it is possible. It's it's not a bad probability, but uh, you know, you know me, I rather wait for it to do to make that correction, or either here, or here personally. But looking at the setup here of this upside, breaking through these moving averages basically, and now hooking back to them, it could definitely be a springboard up to that 135.50. Uh, let's take a look at the Aussie. Aussie has a good, good, good trend line here. Now I shorted it. Those I told you I have a a, a short yesterday here. I had a short and here. I don't know if anyone joined me on the Aussie USD uh, short yesterday, right in here at the, the 618 target. Let me zoom out to the one hour chart so you can see that. So I had a pending order here, right? At the minus six. I told everyone about that yesterday. <clears throat> and got entered. Uh, in fact, w I didn't expect that it would get entered anymore because we made this fall already from the minus 272 target. But you can see how dangerous it is it is to expect immediate follow through because we still got one more push up to hit that target. I didn't expect that to be honest. I um, I thought that this was the turn and then we would get a break but you can see we still push one more time up maybe take some stop losses here who knows uh, you know the market uh, does funny things sometimes right but anyhow got to push up again that's where I had the second entry order and I, when I when I saw this one hour can I move my stop loss to break even, and the break would be this line. It's a good one hour trend line, good angle, and um, a break would be uh, would be good I think because you can see downside pressure here on the four hour chart. Maybe let's take a look. Yeah. There's a good, you know, there's a good chance that this could break. If it does, then I think there's a, a decent chance to continue with the downside, right? If it would, if it were to break above these tops, then it will probably correct a bit higher, or or even even more higher. We'll have to see how that pans out. That's of later concern. For the moment, as long as we stay below this level, there's definitely potential for this bearishness to continue. And if it breaks this line, we we have a good chance of at least moving down like this if not further. So back to the one hour world. Good trend line, multiple touches, good angle. 
Yeah, it has all the characteristics what I would look for in a, in a trend line. Spaces in between here. So it's like three areas, multiple touches. So personally, I would add a scale in here. Let's take a look at the Kiwi. Kiwi really bounced strongly, in fact. Uh, yesterday we were saying, look out for a break uh, above this, this, this resistance because that could lead towards that bullishness. Actually, we already had a bullish bias here, but the confirmation was a break of that uh, red line, right? Um, but you know, we had already the analysis done that this is probably going to move up just because of uh, the, uh, the band already pointing up and this correction being quite impulsive, breaking above the long-term moving averages, uh, etc. So there was a potential for that. That's exactly what happened. And when we broke above, we hooked back. That was a perfect long in here if anyone took that and doing very well with that trade. Almost 100 pips. At the moment, we don't have any trend lines on this particular chart. Let me take a look at the 15. There's no trend line really. There's no because this is just this broke already. You know, if anything, there was a trend line, great trend line, potentially yesterday, right? When we made the oh no, that was sorry. Here, maybe here. When we made the break, excuse me, or here, a small one. At the moment, we don't have anything like that. So no trend line, but from a long-term perspective, let's take a look. I guess we should be careful of this potential head and shoulders maybe. So 85, 35 should be a level. We should we should keep an eye on, right? That's also a resistance here. So be careful of that. Dollar Swissy. Dollar Swissy bounced off this target but didn't really continue anywhere so far. It's not a trend line, but it's more like a horizontal resistance. Maybe something like that. Could be a line we can keep an eye on. Same actually as like the euro, right? The euro also has a trend line that we can keep an eye on. So this is kind of the equivalent of the euro, but then to the opposite direction, logically. So. It's a, it's a trend line we can keep an eye on. Uh, we do have to be a bit cautious with the Swissy. There is some bigger resistance around 91.80. That is an important level because that's also the monthly last month high. So obviously, um, last month ended up like a doji in a way, like something like this on the Swiss dollar Swissy. Slightly positive. So. You know, if we break last month's high, then there is a potential maybe to to move up and challenge a trend line that's coming like this uh, from a weekly perspective, and go up to challenge this top. All right, so there could be maybe some 150, 180, 200 pips then to the upside. Not immediately, you know, you know how the currency goes, but you know, from a bigger perspective, we could have that space. So obviously, this is a level that could cause resistance and might not break immediately. We could easily see respect for that level. So that's something we definitely want to be careful in when, if there is a break here um, to target that level or, or close to it. In fact, maybe the euro is better because of that. Let's see, the dollar cat. Well, the analysis, the, the, the normal relationship between the dollar Swiss C is, uh, and your dollars, they're correlated. Uh, and typically what you would see is they, op they move oppositely of each other. Obviously, the euro Swiss C nowadays moves again as well. Uh, I hardly look at that, or almost never anymore, but uh, since the peg. But 
obviously now the euro Swiss has its has its movement too so I've also read recently that the relation the correlation is not as strong as it used to be that you know nothing I, I discovered myself but I read that so yeah that's but that's typical anyhow you would you should expect the opposite Uh, let's see, pound caddy, we can take a look at that. Let me finish this dollar cat and then we can take a look at that. Uh, let's see, dollar cat, what's it doing? It broke this trend line that was already Monday morning. Hook back, oh, I remember. Yesterday we said, let this move up as far as it wants, wait for a hook back and buy it on the hook back. Remember? Now I remember. I was trying to, just needed a few seconds here. That pr that proves out pretty well, in fact, doesn't it? Um, Six eighteen fib of this last fractal to fractal, rented minus two seven two target. It's not moving like a, a superstar. The dollar cat, no, no, you know, it's not a big mover, right? It's not a really a currency that breathes pips like uh, some of these yen crosses. But um, anyhow, it, it it's still technically a nice trade back into support, and we got the bounce. And, Maybe we'll get some continuation. I think that uh, if you didn't take profit already, then aiming for the minus 618 would make sense for the moment. And catching those uh, 40 some pips. At the moment, if you didn't take that trade, uh, let's see, there could be maybe some smaller trend line here, but uh, it's. I don't know, it's, it's not really a breakout that is that great, I think. I don't know how much space there is really. Just 20 pips left maybe before we can already, because this dollar cat doesn't move a lot, right? So we shouldn't be planning for 200 pip movements. I don't know. I don't see really something interesting. I don't know. Maybe if it hooks back again. I don't know if it will do that a third time, but um, nothing that interesting here. Uh, dollar yen. Oh, wait. Pound cat. I promised pound cat. One second. Pound cat did not reverse in uh, in the spots that I was looking for in this zone so it's good we didn't put any pending orders and we're waiting for market order for because of the pound fundy right yesterday the pound fundy was was up so it's good always to be aware of that because it's definitely accelerated the pound into into higher territories also on the pound cat and uh, well because of that because of that acceleration and we got a fractal here, uh, this is now an uptrend. So, you know, this is just like the pound dollar, in fact. Uh, most likely, if we move back into this zone, we could see a bounce again. Maybe we have hidden divergence on the four hour chart slightly between these bottoms. So yeah, I think any dips are actually, you know, buy dips on, uh, oh, buy on, on dips, right? And sell on rallies in, in, in the uptrend and downtrend, of course. And uh, I think that would make sense here because this the, the tables have tur turned, obviously, here. The first signal, first uh, point where we broke through is here and when we broke through this then the lock to moving average then for me this is now bullish. Let's see, any chance for the dollar cat to hook back to 103.60, 103.80? Yeah, it's possible. It bounced off to 382. It could definitely go to the 50 or 618. Definitely could. 
That's why if you did take the bounce here, I should mention it. If, if anyone did take the trade here, just move it to break even. And there's no there's no reason to hang in there now. The currency has moved. If you haven't taken the profit, then hang into this target, but don't risk anymore. Put it to break even because otherwise it could it could do that and then bounce. Right? Always be aware of that. It, it you know the currency is going to bounce off these fibs, but the question is: Is it going to get follow through or is it going to retrace deeper? Once we're in the middle here, we don't know which one of that you know which one of those two is going to pan out for the moment. And um, it might keep on breaking to the upside. It could retrace deeper to the 50 or 680. So there's definitely a chance that it could go there. Dollar yen got a 618 bounce yesterday. And uh, is resuming uh, the, the uptrend. Uh, price is uh, above the moving averages now hooking back to the moving averages in fact a good trend line I think we have a pretty good trend line here is, is, is this one in fact where well, we had multiple trend lines yesterday uh, even this one then this one and this one so that's a good one maybe another one I wouldn't trade it but we can keep an eye on if this indeed acts as support Wouldn't trade the break of it personally, but other than that, we could have a continuation. If we break above the blue line, we could have a continuation up to 99.40 at least, and then 50, 99.60, where we have a minus 618 target and a uh, a big weekly wedge line coming in. Okay, very important line because if we break that line, it's a it's really a, a weekly bullish break. So, you know, weekly bullish breaks are good things to keep an eye on. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it would, be a, it would be a massive move, potentially, if we break that purple line. Okay, we, could, we could really see it go to 110, maybe even 120. So that's something to keep an eye on. Otherwise, if we respect that, we can maybe move back down to the bottom, and it's just expanding the wedge. So there's still a move up in here. Ah, yeah, yesterday. Yesterday we were talking about the bounce uh, up in here um, with, uh, with this, right? With the stop loss here, 15 pips. Yes, 98.30 indeed. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's... That all depends on how you, yeah, it really depends. If you like, if you would have liked to catch it, what is it? Yeah, if, if you haven't taken profit, I guess you didn't take profit yet. Um, because otherwise you wouldn't be asking it. I guess there would be nothing wrong with moving it break even and hanging into 99.40 in that case. 99.40 would give about a, what is it? 110 pip profit, and you are, your, our risk was 15, which is a se almost a seven to one R to R, which is a great trade, right? Uh, another way of doing it would have been to put a fib on this and target the minus 272, for example, and that would that was yeah, was about that was about more modest, but still two and a half to one R to R. If you haven't done that, then Either keep it a break even, I would say. Let's see. Or even move the stop loss to underneath this, 98, 38. But it's not much. It's 8 pips. 8 out of 15 is about half, half a unit of reward. At the moment, I don't think there are any other options because the problem is we're, we're making a bull flag like this. And it would be a yeah. This bull flag could continue down, but then again, it would be a pity to click it out uh, here, maybe, and see it then bounce up and break this bull flag to the upside. Then, you know, so that also depends how you know on your own 
goals and what you want to, to achieve. If you think that now at the moment you still have 20 pips out of 15 risk, it's a bit more than one to one. So it, it's really your choice. It's difficult to say. Uh, for me, I wouldn't, I would still think that this is a bull flag personally, but let's take a look. Obviously, there's always the risk that we correct lower and bounce and do this, who knows, but you know that then you don't want to be in that five minute trade it's a it's a five minute world trade, so that that would take too long anyhow uh, I still think it's the bouncing spot potential bouncing spot, but looking at the moving averages here. And price hooking back to it. So personally, I, I would think the best is to move it to break even, and try to hang in for there for the seven to one. Personally. Yeah. It is moving down a bit, but at least you have nothing to lose, right? I mean, everything is break even, and you got a you got a decent shot at at that R two R. I would say it was a good it was a good turning spot, though, huh? It's right right at the bottom here. I don't like the speed that it's maybe moving right now. There was some Bank of Japan press conference. I don't know what was said, but. But don't get this lose by maybe the 15-minute world, and, and you know it's all relative. You know, one option is still it's still you know it's a possibility that this is an A. This is a correction, in fact, and then we move up. It's still possible. We would really need actually a bigger break. We need really a break of this blue line to say that this is again a continuation of the bullish count. So maybe if 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 you're not in that trade from down here, uh, as recommended yesterday, then personally I would be careful here. It could bounce, but it you know you never know. It could also be that bearish correction. So. I would really only wait. In this case, I would only touch the break count. Personally, I, I I would be more cautious at the moment. It's kind of choppy. Also, it's up move. It's a bit choppy still. Rather wait for the break count. Pound yen. No trend line on this one. There's no trend at all. So. <laughs> we can't put a trend line on it. Uh, this is uh, a lot of choppiness. You can easily box that all together. Four hour world is choppy as well. There are all kinds of triangles and chart patterns here. But simply put, it, it looks like a lot of, quite a lot of mess. In fact, to me at least. But uh, the wave here, this 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 band, has a pretty good angle. Very sharp angle now. But the pound yen is 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 very spiky. All right. If you look at pound yen and compare it to moving averages, uh, it uh, it will be a lot more spiky around those moving averages than any other probably any other currency that we, we can imagine. For the moment, I don't see really any trend line that, that makes sense to trade. Maybe except this four-hour trend line. But we have to be careful because it could easily be this line as well.
That's the only trend line that actually I see. Otherwise, no trend lines here. Euro yen. Euro yen made a pretty, wow, big spike up. One second, let me, okay. Yeah, that was a pretty big spike. Urian moving down fast now. I'm not sure what we said yesterday. Let me take a look. Uh, it was at the bottom here. I don't think we said anything because we said that there was no trade anymore here. Uh, justly so because we broke this bottom. There was divergence. And look at that. When we got divergence, what happened? Three wave right back to the long term moving average. Right to the pip. Almost right to the pip. At the moment, I'm not all too sure. Let me take a look at the four hour chart. Looks bearish on the four hour chart. We can see that. We got a lot of fractals here, and it's looking like a, a an impulse, a big box, in fact. So if you look at it from that perspective, we can maybe see this, challenging this bottom from the four-hour perspective. Let me take a look at the daily even. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we have the potential. You can see that if you look at the daily chart, look at our band ever since one year ago. How many times have we broken below that? Not many times, as you can see. This, of course, never because it was such an impulse move up. Here a bit, here a bit, here and here. So maybe four times and some smaller times here. Uh, so obviously, many times this was actually just a retracement from our upside. The only time when we broke a fractal was here. We got some follow through. Here we didn't get any follow through. Here a bit. Here a bit. So historically, we should be careful, I guess. But uh, obviously, there's an obvious pattern with this uh, band on the daily chart. There is divergence, though. So maybe this time the situation is different. Personally, I think if we break this yesterday's low. There would seem at least space up to challenge this this bottom. If not lower. Let's see. This four hour chart is looking pretty bearish, but let me put a fib here. Then again, you know, we have to be careful because this is a minus 618 target of this very first correction. That could be also a bouncing spot for more upside. So, you know, we have to be careful. Something like this as well, right? That could happen here too. So we're at a bouncer break spot, I would say. Either break this bottom, we probably should see a fall here. Or here we can still see a bounce. So back to the one hour world now. We got a bit of an angle here. 
Now we can connect these bottoms, but I wouldn't. I would be a bit careful with that because once this is an important level, there's some space maybe here between the trend line and bottom, but you know, we have to be careful of that. The angle here is a bit to the upside still, so this could even be still a bouncing spot. I wouldn't want to trade that necessarily, but. Yes, yeah, so I don't really see anything personally that that's interesting at the moment. So let's move on. Odd yen. It's funny because odd yen is looking more bullish, right, on this four-hour chart, obviously. Kind of rounding here, breaking above these tops. Something like here, right? Very similar to this. We do have divergence though between these tops. <clears throat> the upside though is is, is pretty uh, pretty slow, pretty weak angle. If anything, we can keep an eye probably on both these trend lines, right? If we break one of these two, either we're accelerating to the upside or we're accelerating to the downside. So that would make sense to me. Probably that would be the best to wait for because otherwise this could be chopping around uh, between those levels. Your odd looks like a pretty good bear flag at the moment. Classical uh, example of a potential bear flag. Break to the downside obviously would be the uh, the prime trade to to look out for. Uh, let's see. Here we had a minus six eighteen bounce. Let's take a look if it happened here as well. We did have a minus six eighteen here. Then went to minus thousand. Maybe if I move the fib up here. We went to the minus 272 target. That was earlier, that was very early that my morning. Uh, da -da. Anyhow, so that was behind us. Yeah, break like this looks good. This is the 50, oh, but this is the 50 minute world. Okay, oh, well, still. Yeah, the, oh, wait, excuse me. I, sh I correct myself. There is a bigger bottom here, so we should be aware of that. I mean, it still could make that fall, but just be aware that we, you know, we're testing this daily bottom. That's not the level you want to mess around with. You want to be careful of that. All right. Otherwise, you can see that our band is a very, very strong downside, and that could easily push this further down. Alrighty. Uh, there was a question here, by the way. How do we project the take profit targets using fibs? What you can, what you do is uh, you grab, or I have, I have the targets first of all on a fib retracement. Okay. So what I did was go to fibo properties, and then go to levels, fibo levels and then add minus figures. So click on add and then add minus 0.0272.0.0618. So everything is on one tool. So with that in mind, uh, we can go to, for example, any swing high, swing low that we, we deem 
a good swing high, swing low, so like this, for example. Right from here to here, 618 down to the minus 272, minus 1000. So you can, if you if you have doubts about swing high, swing lows, then uh, yeah, it's something that you just have to get a bit of experience in. You know, using the most recent one is is usually pretty good, unless of course you use the most recent one in this one. If you start fibbing, of course, from um, from here to here, obviously that fib didn't work because it was a it's just topping out and reversing. Well, you know, in those cases, of course, in a range the fibs will not provide that uh, value and will not provide that support or resistance that we're looking for. But if you're in a trending market like this, right, just look at the band and use that as an idea. If there is a strong movement, then, uh, then the chance of the fib working um, as a support or resistance is higher. So if you use this, for example, right, from top to bottom, Almost yeah, missed the 50 fib by maybe one pip. Let's see. Five pips. I hope so. I hope that helped. That's that's the way to do it. You can also look at the oscillator and say, okay, uh, the, if you if you see the oscillator topping out like this and moving down, and if it doesn't reach, if it reaches once it once it reaches the zero line. Then you know that that particular move is one one unit. Obviously, you do want to take a look at a bit of multiple time frame analysis because if you start fibbing this upside, then price just crashes through those fibs, right? Let me do that. Why did it do that? It, it's maybe stopped a bit at the 618, but otherwise, not nothing much, right? Why did it do that? Well, that has everything to do with the fact that that fib was really not important because. The downside is prevalent here on the four-hour chart, and which fib was important? In fact, the downside fib was important. If you put a fib on here, it stopped at the 32 and the 50 fib. Okay. So you need, you do need to keep an eye on uh, on that multiple time frame analysis point of view to 200 to to get an idea which fib could be important. You know, and if you have any doubts, then don't take the entry on the fib, but wait for confirmation. So I hope that helped. And if you have a question, let me know, okay? So this is year on the Z, the one hour chart. Obviously the band is very showing a very strong trend on this one hour chart. Fifty minute world. Well, yesterday we had a break here. Uh, let me see. Yesterday evening, maybe a break in here somewhere. Difficult to say exactly where, maybe here. Or even here. At the moment, we're just seeing the follow through of downside. Uh, there's really no trend line here because this has a slant to the downside like this. And we're approaching this bigger bottom. So no trend line. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be that interested at the moment. Your odd is a bit better because it's like this this bigger consolidation. But I'm not surprised you're using this fall that much. New Zealand, you know, pretty strong even against the uh the dollar, right? As well, and against the CAD, and uh, let me think. I'm not, I'm not sure about the odd. Probably the odd New Zealand was also going down. Uh, wait, yeah. Pound dollar, pound, uh, pound odd. Sorry, pound odd. Uh, da, 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 nothing really. That's well. We can have some trend line here, maybe. Oh, like this.
it's quite choppy. Let's take a look at the four-hour ch charts. You know, w one thing it was always good to keep in mind: if 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 one hour looks like this, where it's a bit choppy and prices flying all over the place, it's usually a good idea to take a look at the four-hour to get a bit more perspective. For our world, we can see that there is a potential of this being a retracement. This this is a retracement for more downside. We need to break below this. This could be a hook back for more downside. Now let's go back to the one hour chart. So pretty important. If we break above this, and especially above this, you know, we're probably correcting higher. If we do move down from here, there's a good chance that we'll break this trend line and move and break to the downside. Yeah, so there's a potential here to fall. Just not a big fan of this pound on at the moment, but pound New Zealand was better yesterday. That was a good break yesterday, right here. I'm not sure if we talked about this one. Maybe not because um, I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Nine. Nine o'clock yesterday, maybe. I don't remember, to be honest. But it was a good break. I think we did. But that was a good break to the downside as well. Um, moving nicely. Pretty good angle of the, the band. It's also breaking this... Uh, bigger weekly line, right? Oh yeah, we did. We talked about the triangle, right? Potential triangle here. And uh, the break of the uh, triangle potential to the downside would be very sweet. So that's what's doing right now, in fact. Is there anything to trade right here, right now? Here too, not a really a trend line, it's just it, it retraced twice back to the 50 minute band and seen follow through. So pretty impulsive. But um, you know, maybe these were good sells right in here on a hook back. But otherwise, there's no breakout at the moment like this. This was a very sweet, very well built structure. Um, looking at the one hour chart or 30 minute one hour chart, you can see that. So that was a, a good break. Otherwise, right now, as you know, the, the currency is just travel. And um, sometimes I do add on if it's a good smaller retracement or something like that. But at the moment, I don't know. Not too appealing at the moment. Um, let's see, some questions. Yes, I do, Richard, indeed. And Jason... The setting of the, yeah, the settings are 34 EMAs. The, the band is 34 EMAs. One is a close, one is a high, and one is a, a low. So exponential, 34, shift zero, apply to close, high, and low. And then this one is a 144. Pound odd TP. Well, <clears throat> depends which which whether you're trading. In fact, um, where did you enter? Or yeah, or where do you do you want to enter? And uh, with which stop loss? 
because it depends. I think we discussed two ideas, the break of the to the downside or maybe even to the upside. I think you're probably talking about downside. But so, and from here? If you sell it right in here? Uh, okay. Personally, I probably would wait, if anything, I would still wait maybe for a break of this bottom, but even here it could work indeed, definitely. Uh, let's see. Stop loss could be above this 50 meter fractal. 25, that's 30 pips or so. Well, if you get all the way down here, I would say that's a sweet, already a sweet trade because that would be a 3 to 1 trade. There's going to be some bounce here. I don't think you want to live through a bounce and then again move down. Or even the potential of this becoming a big, very big range. So I would aim for somewhere in here. Let's take a look. Maybe 168.10. It's about 85 pips. 168. 167.90, anywhere, you know, it depends how aggressive you want to go. Obviously, the trend line is at the moment around 167.80. So, you know, it depends how much you want to squeeze out of it. Personally, I don't like to aim for the very last pip, right? What is a pip among friends, among friends right? So, I, I like to aim a bit higher than the actual TP I have in mind. That's why. Then if I go a bit higher, let's say to 167, 90, 94, then I might as well go, I was thinking above the 168, which is kind of a even number. So, you know, 168, 10, I was thinking. That's why. Which is still 85 pips. So, But, you know, one way of doing it is, let's take a look at, uh, it's quite choppy though. I don't know. I'm not big fan of this at the moment, but let's see. Let's put a fib from the very first swing high to this swing low, because this upside, in fact, is still a correction, right? Look, it went to the 786 and 886. So, with that in mind, where's the minus 272 at 167.98? So then 168.10 makes sense because that's aiming for this minus 272, 12 pips above that minus 272. Cool. All righty. Uh, let's see, gold, we can take a look at that. It's funny how really nothing really changed that much, it's just gone sideways. Still the same is, is, is valid in my opinion, is either a break here which could bring us back to 1430, and if we break about 1430 to 1520. Or uh, we would need to break probably, yeah, oh wait, there was also the, a chance to fall, right? I was saying to 1277, and then bounce up. I now remember. So it's still possible. Could be at a resistance right now, in fact, potentially. So looking at these two lines could be an indication of which way we want to break.
This looks pretty aggressive though, this upside. But then again, these upsides were also pretty aggressive. So let's see. Probably these trend lines are, are the best. Yeah. So we're at a potential bouncing spot. Let's see if it happens. Um, Bjorn is saying, Elliot, there's nothing you use. Uh, it's definitely something I use. It's just uh, not in this webinar because our focus here is uh, trend lines today. But I do think we have a, if you're interested in waves, then we do have a live trading session where we will focus on wave and fib trading. You see here, the 21st of November. I think that's the only one this month. Let me take a look. Do you like waves, uh, Pure? You like Elliott Wave? Oh, you hate them? <laughs> I thought you were disappointed because you said, like, Elliot, there's nothing you use. So it seemed like, oh, <laughs> to me. But it depends. You know, it's tech, so I, I can't interpret uh, how, you, how you meant that. Well, it's not that messy. It's just, uh, to me, it's just uh, looking at impulses. It's just basically, do you look at impulse and correction? Or do you don't look at that? Next week we got intraday price action and moving average. Well, if you look at in any case, if you look at impulse and correction, and all edit wave is does is it just pieces those together, right? What it just does is it's, it's this is impulse, this is correction, this is impulse. So all it does is like okay, it, it just glues those pieces together and says, okay, that's that, and that's that, and this is probably going to be correction, and this is probably going to be impulse. That's all, really. However, you'll see in some cases it's more difficult to... to Oh, thanks, Yano. I hit the uh, mute button by accident. I think that, uh, I don't know exactly what you missed, but um, I was saying that impulse, the any wave was connecting impulses and corrections. Did you hear that part? Oh, you didn't? Okay. No, I was just saying that... Uh, what all wave analysis does is look at impulses and corrections, right? And then try to, by piecing those puzzles together, right? This is impulse. All it does says, okay, this is impulse. Okay, this is correction. This is impulse. So what's likely going to happen? Well, then probably it's going to be correction. Well, probably it's going to be impulse. Well, probably it's going to be correction. Well, probably it's going to be correction. Right? So what all it does is... Uh, 
is say this is impulse, this is correction, this is impulse, so therefore the next one is that. That's all. Obviously in some cases it's more clear than others. Right? Obviously in some cases it's not as clear and then it's just good to avoid using it because who knows what it could be. Typically it makes this impulse correction, impulse correction, impulse, right? And then maybe correction correction correction. Or impulse correction impulse. Uh, it's just like in my opinion, just like a bear flag. If you see a bear flag or bull flag, I use it. If I don't see it, I don't trade it. So the same with the wave count. If it's not clear to me, I don't use it. If it's clear, then I would use it as a sub sub uh, argument or sub analysis to uh, you know support potential uh, potential trading decisions. I think though that wave analysis that primarily use wave and then make training decisions, I think that's when things uh, that the tool starts actually to become less useful in my opinion. <laughs> Some wave analysis out there may be mad at me, but uh, if you primarily focus your trading on that wave, then I think it goes wrong or it's less useful because then you always want to have a count. You always want to uh, be using that count. Whereas if you just look at the charts, and uh, if you then say, okay, you know, you, you use all your patterns that you have that you know of, and you, you use that knowledge to tackle your road mapping skills of looking at the currency, and then if it's very clear or it's relatively clear, uh, you say, okay, that's you know, could be a, a wave one, two, wave three correction. This is maybe wave four or five, you know. And then use this supportive argument is actually more valuable than always you know, using the wave as a core principle. So what I do is I just use it occasionally when it's very when it's clear and it's just just ignore it if it's not. Just like chart patterns. All right, I'll, I'll stop with my rant on uh, <laughs> on wave counting. Um, uh, WIFO, yeah, that, that's, that's uh, WIFO, it, def it definitely could be indeed, uh, it does look so. There's potential for a downside here, that's true. Darshan is saying, pound news in six minutes. Let's take a look at that. But uh, definitely, I mean, you could. There's no, not not any necessarily any reason to 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 learn any wave. But personally, I find it interesting. It's it's also a bit of a hobby, and sometimes I do think it gives a, a bit of edge. But it really depends on uh, on you, of course. We got the Euro Services PMI uh, two minutes from now. I don't see any pound news. Let's see. Thirty-four minutes from now, right? I think my clock is running behind. It says 8.58 and it's 8.56. Strange. Ah, okay. Yeah, Darshan is also saying 33 minutes from now. Um, I don't know what time. What time do you have it? Is it is my clock out of sync? I don't know. Or maybe AM website. No, it says 8.57. Ah, the Euro services will be released at 8.58. That's such a wacky time. I don't know who came up with that. Let's release it at 8:58. <laughs> Weird. Anyhow, um, yeah, the the it's medium here indeed. I would say it's it's uh, it's could definitely have been red tagged as well personally. 
if there's a recording of Wave of Fibs. No, it's, uh, Richard, that's still a future live trading webinar, in fact. Let me take a look. That was two weeks from now, I think. But we do have a, if you're interested in that, we do have, a while ago, there was a recording from Fibs and Waves, in fact. Here, uh, let's see, Wave and Fib Trading, 21st of November. But there is a video on Fib somewhere in here. You have to take a look exactly where, not right here, 26th of September. But we have, by the way, for those of you who are maybe new to Fibs, we have a, f a new webinar coming on, actually, about Fibs. By the way, Fibonacci for beginners, we called it. Also the 21st of November. Ah, oh, so maybe that's why. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure if I did it on purpose, but it's uh, all on the same day. The waves were it was way back actually. Uh, that was one of the f first webinars, uh, the seventh of March. A fantasy or reality? So that's the seventh of March. Looks like we're pushing through that trend line. In fact, I don't know. The gold is. Uh, Yeah, it's moving up pretty fast. Well, if you look at the one hour, this is the 15, one hour. Let me take a look at the one hour. I would say it's still the 1325 areas resistance here. Look at this top right in here. This could all still be uh, 1322, 1325, that could still be turned into a, uh, a range. I know it looks impulsive now, and it could push through, I'm not saying, but it could also respect that level, so I would still be cautious about that. If, if it pushes through and it then makes a bull flag like that, well obviously then we could expect a bounce to the upside here. As long as we don't da do that, we should still consider this be bearish, in my opinion. Right? There's no no reason to change that unless we really push through and make a pull flag and then bounce off here. Oh my, I don't know. <laughs> hitting this button all the time. So I don't know how much you missed of that. I was saying that, uh, so I have to repeat then, I don't know exactly what you missed, but uh, I was saying that that uh, basically this is still resistance. Up into 1322, 1325, it's still resistance. This can still turn into a big, big old box range, and in fact, we're right at the top of it. Anything in here. This is still a resistance spot. The target right in here, this spot, all that is resistance. The long term moving average, everything is resistance. So either we, we bounce here for downside, and if we don't, then I want a clear break or at least some break of it, and a bull flag, and then a bounce here. If, we, if that were to happen, then I would, I would be a buyer uh, anywhere above, that, above a trend line like that. Then the train, then the train, the trend has changed. Until that moment has happened, there's no reason to be bullish for the moment. Right? It's still bearish. Alrighty. So let's take a last look. I didn't see. We went through all of them. I didn't see. Ozzy did the Ozzy break. I hope no. Ozzy is still moving up. Well. You know, if we do get a bounce here, 
then uh, that could be the the confirmation in fact actually we could look for in that case probably break out straight to the upside because if this is bouncing here it will follow the kiwi and we could see upside reversal you know, it was it was quite essential for this to move down fast otherwise we could already see some trend change happening that's why I have it at break even there's no reason for me to hang in there uh, this was the turning spot for downside and if not then we're probably reversing and I don't need to be in that trade right? so let's see it's too early to tell I wouldn't encourage you know to assume that as yet we don't have any fractal here so let's see the next the next two hours will tell if we don't break this bottom this last hours low at 9505 that would be a pivotal moment because then we're building a base for that upside most likely ah nice Richard good job very nice yeah there was definitely reason to to consider that this couldn't maybe necessarily break well not this one necessarily but I was still bearish there but when we move down here especially I would say this spike that changed the uh, dynamics because uh, what we had here was still an impulse correction this one should have broke uh, should have broke that uh, trend line that was the optimal timing right here but it didn't it bounced again and with a pretty impulse in fact and now it's kind of just inching f downwards and we have an engulfing maybe one hour twin here so there are definitely reasons this is this is changing the dynamics right here because you can see our band is cro is moving up it's it's crossing the long-term moving averages as we speak so slowly but surely you're getting that change and shift um, from bearish to bullishness and for me the confirmation would be really if we have a fractal here then then I'm bullish so kind of like a triangle now at the moment uh, an impulse you can tell by looking at the swing high swing low if most of the candles an impulse has certain characteristics first of all the candles to that impulse are bigger to that direction so let's take a look at this downside here the downside candles are bigger than the upside candles on average that's one characteristic the the bearish candles are tend to be closed tend, the closes tend to be near the low indicating no weakness second characteristic third uh, the the bullish candles are smaller like typically smaller and uh, a ma the majority of them should be bearish, right? The majority of the candles should be bearish. It should only be a few upside candles. Typically, every low gets every low, uh, every hourly candle gets a new low, like this. Right now, obviously, there are some spots where you don't get a, a newer low, <clears throat> and that, in fact, is a consolidation on a smaller time frame. Right, so this actually impulse correction, impulse correction, impulse correction, impulse. Right, on the smaller time frame, maybe on the 50 minute world, it would be like that. On the one hour time frame, we could consider this, though, in its entirety, an impulse. For me, one of the rules I use is often of five to six candles, as some of you know. So this already violated that five to six candles. So in, you know, if you take that really very strictly, then it would be impulse correction impulse. I use five to six candles. If it doesn't 
typically break between five to six and we don't have a newer low, then typically I would consider the impulse to be broken. Now, is it a 100% guaranteed rule? No, but it's a good generalization and a good idea usually. Because if we don't break five to six, usually we do expand the correction until uh, 13 or 21 or 18, anything like that. Or we, re we might even reverse. Does that make sense, Richard? I hope I explained it uh, well. So that's typical what we impulse correction. A correction would be the opposite. The candles would be all mixed, right? Something like this or, uh, or this. The candles are mixed. You don't have uh, you know, a clear direction. The bullish and bearish candles are just as big. The closes are halfway. Doji is not, you know, not near the high or low. It's all the opposite. Okay. Any any follow up questions? Maybe Jason is saying that the four hour Ichimoku cloud shows. Uh, Thick resistance area up to 96. Up to 96. Well, let me add that. Ah, yeah, that's pretty thick indeed. Interesting. But here in the one-hour world, you can see that we're already above it, right? So there could be some upside maybe to 96. Could make sense. Looks like we're breaking right now. Ooh, pound is already moving up. Wow, it didn't even go as far as as deep as I thought it would, it's really very, very bullish. Here's a typical example of a, of a turnaround, right? Right here, when you got this support off of the uh, long-term moving average, that's when I knew this is probably going to be bullish, in fact, because this could have still been a correction, right? This could have still been a correction. But when this downside was corrective like this, especially because the fractal here was above the moving averages, well, then the likelihood of a bullish move was, was was very strong. In fact, it was so bullish that it already broke in the Asian session. Of course, I didn't catch that. I wasn't I was sleeping. But if we would have woken up with uh, still a triangle like that, I would have looked for upside. Now I thought, you know, at least the correction I wanted down to here didn't happen. What can you do? Your dollar indeed getting that upside as we expected from these uh, moving averages. Not moving that much though. EU, new, EU news was positive. Richards is saying, I think I have to wait for the movie to come out. <laughs> I'm not sure if, if I, I can make a movie about it. But <laughs> Let me see if I can give a better example otherwise. Let's take a look at, look at this, you know. All these candles are, what are these candles? They're close to the, they're closing near the low, most of them. Most of them are bearish. They're all cutting, every candle is almost cutting the hour, next hour's low. And if there's any bullish candles, there are only a few of them, and they're very small, and they have a lot of wick. Typical impulse, right? So that's maybe a better example to understand. So what do we have then? This is a mix of candles, ups, downs. Right? So this is more like a, a correction. Impulse again. Right? So that's maybe a better example.
I don't even I don't even know how it's possible. <laughs> Why does it happen three times in this session? I don't know. Four times. I'm hitting this mute button constantly. It's because the the uh it's hitting against my armchair in fact. I have to be more careful. The, Anyhow, I was saying that there's a lot of data weakness uh, so far today, and uh, except against the euro, and maybe not that much against the yen, but the euro seems to be the weakest together with the dollar. Getting a break on this euro, odd. Odd yen could be uh, maybe a potential bounce here. Let's see if you can break through that trend line. Pound yen is indeed bouncing here. Yeah, well, I guess uh, from my side, I don't see really that much on the majors at the moment, except maybe your dollar weakness still. Other than that, Aussie isn't doing what what I was hoping it would do. It looks like it's reversing. So any any break of this trend line and hook back would probably already good buy. It's just like the Kiwi. Other than that, pound. I wouldn't mind buying it, but I want to buy it lower. Uh, I like the dollar yen break if it does break. Doesn't look that uh, bullish at the moment, but uh, still potential. If it does break, it would be interesting. Looks a bit weird though, the dollar yen. I'm not sure if it's going to break that that uptrend, uh, that uptrend line here, this trend line. But maybe I'm a bit too pessimistic. It's still, uh, it's still in this uptrend channel. Prices move above moving averages. So let's see. It would be nice to get a bounce, but who knows? Uh, well, that wraps it up for today. I'm the what indicator I use are basically at the moment we use the move moving averages and trend lines and some fibs, right? And uh, the oscillator here at the bottom is called the awesome oscillator. So that's, uh, you can find that awesome oscillator by going to insert indicators, Bill Williams, and awesome oscillator, and fractals. Awesome oscillator, and fractals. And other than that, trend lines, fibs, and moving averages, okay? And the moving averages are 34 EMA close, high, and low. Yeah, sure, Richard. Take a look at Rich's question, and we'll wrap it up for today. And uh, hope to see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we have two webinars: this live trading session, and then uh, an educational topic. Let me take a look at oh, yeah, trading confluence, right? Yeah. If I think the Aussie will break, well, probably yes. Let's see. Uh, for me, the decisive moment would be a fractal really at this, this level, which it does look like it's going to get. All we need is this hour to close and next hour to close. I think that likelihood of a break here, actually it's breaking as we speak almost, is, is decent. I would be surprised if we all of a sudden turn around and, and start falling from this spot. The, the momentum shift seems to, seems to be in, in really in motion now with this, like that. Um, this bounce was really 
the critical one in my opinion. I mean, what would be the target? Well, we can put a fib on this upside and take a look. The minus 272 is at 95. 65. That would be your first target. The second target is 9606, which is this resistance as well. So anywhere, any of those two, depending on you know what you want to aim for, could be a decent target. Now who knows? This might extend all the way to 99. I'm not saying, but depending, of course, on what type of trade you have, that that would be a a realistic, you know, take profit realistic uh, goal for something in the intermediate future. This four hour fit. And if I think about it actually, it's always maybe I didn't look at the, the four hour chart enough. We did break above this four hour resistance and this four hour resistance. So the fact that I sold it here was maybe good, but maybe I should have hedged it somewhere in here because I didn't look at it this way. Um, from that perspective, from the four hour perspective, there is reason to think it could bounce, but anyhow, that's too late. Um, let's see first. It it would need we would need a, a clearer break of this level, obviously, but it does look like it's gonna get there. Right? Let's wait for this hour, next hour, and we'll, we'll know if there's a fractal here. But uh, for the moment, it is making higher highs and higher lows. Still in a triangle, though. Alrighty. Well, folks, that wraps it up. Thanks all for being here and joining me, and uh, wish you all great trading today, and see you all tomorrow. Cheers.